Hail you God, we hail you. We worship you. We hail you, Most High. And we just bless the Lord in the Spirit for one minute as we acknowledge His presence. And we allow his glory to saturate our being. Father, we bless you. We give you praise. We've come to the city of the living God. We've come to Mount Zion. We've come to the place of refreshing. Parabasafetomri iskapata. Salibri te fe caparas ve to pelicri pasta to mera pena ros ta pe corri te fe pamas ta paradikis te londoros po fe hati kabahasis. If come on to Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. And to God, the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Kamadi fedana diano to spatalai, shalabara to spetu kopalai, tamalamina stopri nefetaha. We come for a refreshing Jesus. We ask that you will give us insight. Go ahead and speak to God this evening. Lord, open the eyes of my heart. Give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Let the eyes of my understanding become enlightened. That I may know what is the hope of your calling and what the riches of your glorious inheritance in the saints. And the exceeding greatness of your power to us who do believe according to the working of your mighty power which you wrought in Christ. When you raised him from the dead and set him at your own right hand in the heavenly places. Father, I pray for principality and might and power and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world but also in that which is to come. And has put all things under him and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Which is the body, his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. We ask that you will give us wisdom tonight. We ask that you will fill us with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That we may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Being fruitful in every good work and abounding in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might in our inner man. Unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Giving thanks unto the Father who has made us qualified to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. For the firstborn of all creature, invincible, the immortal God. We come before you and we ask that you will fill us with understanding. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, we have 35 minutes there about to wrap up today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Psalms 92. Still talking about kingdom values. Psalms 92. From verse 10 to 14 to 15. 15. Psalms 92. From verse 10 to 15. Okay, last week we discussed about what? What did we discuss last week? Eh? Kingdom values. What there was a word we emphasized. Yes, your bosom. Okay, what was the what are the definitions we gave to bosom? Jesus said, Give and it will come back to you. Good measure pressed down, shaking together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom? So we define bosom. What's bosom? 
your mind what your mind receptive capacity the ability of your mind to contain returns okay what else did we say last week ability to position oneself for reward okay we also talked about the measure with which you give that was the first thing we talked about right last week yeah, i gave us a vivid example of a farmer and a baker right the baker gave the farmer gave the baker measures of wheat and the baker returns in the measure that he was given so at every change of standard the baker changes the standards too because he actually has no standard it is whatever the farmer gives him that he gives back um okay we so we we went on to talk about the bosom how that the bosom is a mind receptive capacity of a man the ability of man to receive or contain rewards if you do not have a large bosom or the size of your bosom is the size of your return that's what we said right we said your inability to manage rewards your inability to be able to manage what people give to you in return for your seed so will affect what you have at hand okay um i would have loved to do Okay, let's read Psalm 92. Psalm 92. Are we together? Psalm 92, verse 10 to 12. Verse 10 to 15, rather. But my own shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My eyes also shall see my desire on mine enemies. And, all, and my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. To show that the Lord is upright, he is my rock. And there is no unrighteousness in him. All right. Uh, very briefly, I want to talk about a very important uh, topic of discussion that that is not commonly thought. Amen. Okay, can we say this together? The righteous shall flourish i can't hear you the righteous shall flourish try it one more time the righteous shall flourish now who is the righteous what is the righteous who are the righteous anybody we're still talking about kingdom values and i want to give you a mind conditioning today that will allow you to be able to occupy much it will increase your capacity to do things you never can tell how much you can do until your mind begins to open and you begin to realize that the things you think are impossible are actually your possibilities okay so the righteous let's define who is the righteous clearly anyone you're saying something Okay, say something. Who is the righteous? Do you know the righteous? Do you know them? Eh? What did you say? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> okay, she said the person that is recognized by God. Thank you for that definition. Yes, anyway, who is the righteous? Who is the righteous? Do you know the righteous? <laughs> Do you know? 
and we are now tell us who the righteous is. Who is the righteous? Okay, now you should give me an idea now. Who is right? Israel, why are you quiet today? Who is the righteous? Eh? Somebody who is upright. Okay? That's a good definition. Tell me, you said something. What did you say? You talk now, now. What did you say? Okay. Somebody who is upright. Uh huh. Any other definition for righteous? Come on. Ah. <laughs> what have you been attending on this school for? That is without sin. Someone that is without sin. Interesting. Tamaris. Who is righteous? Tell us. Okay, someone who is acknowledged by God and whose ways are right. Okay, let's quickly define who the righteous is. You are all correct. There is a basic definition for the righteous. Let's go to Second Corinthians chapter five, verse twenty-one. We we'll see a reference to the righteous there. Second Corinthians five twenty-one. Are we there? Are we there? Let's read. For he hath made him to be seen for us. For sorry, he has made him to be seen for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Right? Okay. So we can say that the righteous are those who have believed the sacrifice of Jesus have accepted that sacrifice and have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now, righteousness is first a standing, a qualification, a confirmment. Okay? Are we together? Hey, are we together? Hmm? Righteousness is first a confirmment, then a responsibility. Are we together? What did I say? Righteousness is first what? A confinement. Something is conferred on you. Right? Then it is also a responsibility. So righteousness has standing and it has deeds. Are we together? It has position and it has deeds. Right? Just like you say, today I confer on you the authority of the governor. What have I done? I have just made you a governor, right? You have attained a position. Did you do anything to get it? Eh? Why? It was conferred on you. Are we together? Are we together? Are we together? If if you worked for it, eh? It would either be a reward or it will be um, by election right people voted you in but it is conferred on you means you 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 were given something that you did not likely work for are we together are we together you either got it by inheritance by favor or by anything else but it was conferred on you are we together so righteousness is conferred the bible said for righteousness to be conferred on us, a particular price was paid. Are we together? Huh? What was the price? Somebody was made sin who did not know sin. So that his righteousness can be taken and conferred on you. Do you understand? There was an exchange. Your sin was taken away from you his righteousness was given to you now what is righteousness in the context of standing righteousness is the ability to stand before god without any feeling of guilt do you understand you pray today and you believe that god hears you right and in fact after you have prayed the spirit of god bears witness in your heart that god heard you 
Are we together? Are we together? Let's pay attention, please. Are we together? Are we together? Okay, I said righteousness is having a standing with God, that is, at the ability to stand before God without any feeling of guilt. Are we together? So if you read Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, I think verse 15. Ephesians 6 verse 15. Let's read. If you read Ephesians chapter 6 uh, verse 15, it says that, And your feet shod with the... Okay, verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having what? The breastplate of righteousness. Say after me, righteousness. Say after me, righteousness. I can't hear you. Righteousness. You have to say it boldly so that it will sink in. Righteousness guards the heart. Say it again. Righteousness guards the heart. Say it again. Righteousness guards the heart. Righteousness guards my heart. How did it guard? How does it guard your heart? It is because the heart of man huh, is the place where God wants to dwell. Are we together? He wants his law, his word to also sit at the center of your heart. Are we together? The heart is the core of your being. In fact, your heart is your appearance before God. Are we together? When Samuel was going to choose Eliab as king against the instructions of God, what did God say? He said, I, God, do not look at the face as man does. What did he say I look at? The heart. So I have looked at the heart of Eliab and I have found some things in him. Therefore, I have rejected him even before he came. Are we together? Are we together? A part of Jeremiah says that thou art he who searches the reins. He tries the reins and searches the heart. That's God. Are we together? So, we have known where righteousness sits. Where does it sit? At the gate of the heart. Are we together? Are we together? Righteousness is first conferred on us. One. Number two. It is the ability to stand before God. Eh? to talk to God without a feeling of guilt. Why? Because the sin has been taken away. Isn't it? Isn't it? Then we also found out that righteousness sits where? At the heart. What does it do? It protects the heart. Are we together? Say my heart is protected by the righteousness of God. You know what that means? You know what that means? Huh? It means you have been conferred with the ability to have a pure heart. Are we together? Eh? You have been conferred with the ability to do what? To have a pure heart. You have been given a guard that is sufficient to guard your heart. However, if you do not deploy righteousness to guard your heart, which is the responsibility part of it, your heart will not be guarded. Are we together? We're still talking about the righteous. Okay? So the righteous is the one who has been conferred upon righteousness. Isn't it? Now, who is the righteous himself? Who is the righteous? Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2. Give us understanding, Jesus. Bring us to the place of your word. Teach us by your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Okay. Abaku chapter 2, verse 4. Are we there? Behold, his soul which is lifted up in him is not upright in him. But who? The righteous. Some versions like KJV say the just. That is the justified. 
those who have received righteousness will live how? By their faith. So what's the responsibility of the righteous? Is there what does this what's the responsibility of the righteous? To live by faith. The responsibility of those who have received righteousness is to exercise righteousness through faith. Are we together? Are we together? Are we together? Now, faith takes many sides. Faith can take the offensive. Faith can take the defensive. Hmm? Faith is a defense. Now, for example, I said righteousness guarding our heart has given us the ability to have a pure heart, isn't it? Now, does that mean that ungodly thoughts will still not come to your mind it doesn't mean right they will still show up but because you have the righteousness of God guarding your heart what do you do you can release your faith by releasing that righteousness by speaking that righteousness against the thoughts do you understand that's how righteousness guards your heart for example you begin to feel guilty that God does not love you. You know, Satan can bring that thought to you. You just feel everything around you is crumbling and that God does not listen to you anymore. Because you have prayed, your prayers have not been answered. You begin to hear those thoughts in your head that you are a discouragement. Eh? Everything is not working well. Everything is going wrong. And then the thoughts begin to introduce themselves to your mind. Are you sure you are a child of God? Do you think God listens to you? This one that you have been praying since and God has not been hearing you. Or that you have not prayed for long and you knelt down to pray. You finally brought yourself to kneel down to pray. And you just sat down there thinking, will God even hear me now that I have not been praying for three days? Your heart is under attack at that moment. What did I say? Your heart is under attack at that moment. Because if that thought gains access into your heart, eh, it will inflict an influence that will block you from reaching God. So righteousness is there as a guard. However, you will need to deploy righteousness eh, against the thought. How do you deploy it? Open your scripture to 2 Corinthians 5.21 and say to those thoughts it is written concerning me he was made sin who knew no sin that i might become the righteousness of god in christ jesus god has brought me close to himself i am his child because it is written concerning me to those who believe him to those who receive him he gave the right to be called children of god children not born of blood but of the will of a husband but children born of god i have been born of god not because i did anything to get it i have been born of god because jesus paid a sacrifice for me what have you done you have deployed a god to keep the purity of your heart do you see how the righteous lives by faith are we together do you see how the righteous lives by faith what does he do he deploys his righteousness because the righteousness was meant to guard his heart are we together there are two things i have seen that guard the heart and mind hmm? Proverbs 4 23 says guard your heart with all diligence for out of it comes the main issues of life. That is, if anything gets access into your heart or comes out of your heart, it means you are being inflicted by that thing. So you have to control what enters your heart. And don't think because the Bible says guard your heart with all diligence, you can guard it by yourself. It's not possible. You guard your heart by submitting it to God. You must begin to say the thoughts of God so that your heart will come under the influence of the thoughts of God. Are we together? Are we together? So righteousness is a guard for the heart. The righteous, however, is the person who deploys the righteousness to keep the purity of a heart. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. And the peace of God 
that surpasses understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. So there are two things that guard the heart. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Those are the three things that guard the heart of a man. Joy guards you against depression. It guards you against the spirit that takes away miracles from people. When you become moody or you allow thoughts of depression to overcome you, it will be difficult for you to release your faith. And if you are not able to release your faith, you will not be able to purchase your miracle. Are we together? Are we together? So Satan wants us to come to a point where we cannot release our faith. So he attacks our mind. But there are three gods. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. They will not do anything unless you deploy them. Are we together? The righteous shall live, shall survive by his faith. To show you the importance of that scripture, it was repeated three times in the Bible, exact same way. Can I show you? Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Pratefe komas, patefe le paros te kabaha. Seliando prostofe kamila talia roska patai ni halo krostepa. Repito spetana mata kila sase. Verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for in it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Verse 17, for therein, where? In the gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed from where? From faith to faith, just as it is written. The righteous shall live by faith. Do you see that people are made righteous by the release of their faith? Are we together? Those who have received the right standing with God exercise their position as the righteous by releasing their faith. Are we together? Are we together? <laughs> Say after me, I have received the righteousness of God. And so I will live by faith. I have received the righteousness of God. And so I will live by faith. I will guard my heart against impure thoughts. I will guard my heart against unholy thoughts. I will guard my heart against ungodly thoughts by the release of my righteousness that is given to me in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So the righteous shall live by faith. The righteous basically is one who understands his position in God and makes his stand by releasing his faith. So, now we understand who the righteous is. Right? Right? So can we find righteous people here? Huh? Do you see righteousness is not about what you did right or what you did wrong it's not about it is it no it's not the bible didn't say the righteous shall live by what they do or what they don't do it said they shall live by faith why because our journey for we walk by faith and not by sight our walk is of faith and not of sight in other words, we are not moved by the physical. As long as 
it is not something coming from the realm of the spirit we are not troubled are we together a physical situation that has no spiritual backing is not a problem because in no time it will fade away are we together i've not got into the core of what we want to discuss today but i trust that god has given us help in defining who the righteous is so say after me i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus say it like you understand it i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus you are not bold i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus say it again i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus amen psalms 92 verse 12 the righteous shall flourish are we together who did he say will flourish the righteous they will do what they will flourish in Genesis chapter 39 verse 1, 2, 3 and 4, the Bible tells us that Joseph was a slave, right, in the house of Potiphar, but the Lord was with him and he prospered. And everything that was committed into the hand of Jacob, the master found out that he prospered with it. In verse 20, Jacob was transferred from Potiphar's house to prison. And the Lord was with him. And he prospered. Are we together? Are we together? Now, we need to question ourselves. If Joseph was in prison, and he prospered, (laughs) and you that you are at home, (laughs) you that you are at home, you don't know pro, not talk of spa. <laughs> it means there is something Joseph knew that we don't know. Every time you find a difference in results of people, eh, it's not where they came from that is affecting them. It is what they know. Do you understand? Do you understand? Eh? Two people can come from a woman, from the same womb, but they don't think the same way. Why? Their thought patterns are different. The content they have is different. So their results are different. Their attitudes are not the same. So, we have found out who the righteous are. Eh? Those who live by faith. Those who exercise their faith to keep the purity of their heart. You guard your heart by submitting it to the thoughts of God. So in meditating in the word of God, your heart is also guarded. Because in meditation, the Lord will give you scriptures that when you come face 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 to face with life situations, they will just spring forth by themselves. So you can be in the dark. And nothing scares you, nothing moves you. Because you know, yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You can be in the midst of lack and still say, you prepare a table before me. In the presence of my adversities, you anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over, even though I have nothing. Are we together? You can realize that your parents have nothing. That uh, some of us, God forbid, eh? But if your parents, for adventure, okay, let's leave it. Some of us have something to look up to. That's what I'm saying. It's not a bad thing. It's a very good thing. Your parents are well to do. So they can leave something for you. But some of us know that our parents don't even have house. 
business a stock of property. <laughs> okay? They don't have house. My mom does not have a house. And I realized this year, last year, <laughs> that my mom does not have a house. Neither does my dad have a house that I want to live in. Huh? There is no inheritance anywhere. <laughs> there is no inheritance anywhere. But I found out in God's word that the Lord is my portion in the land of the living. Thou wilt maintain my lot. You are the top of my inheritance. So, even if nobody leaves anything for me, I am certain that the Lord is my inheritance. How did it come? I have meditated on a scripture. And that scripture entered me. So much so I am not scared. I am not, I'm not scared of anything that has to do with inheritance. In, in the first place, there's no inheritance to talk about. There's nothing at all. No business anywhere to live for you. But the Lord is my inheritance. I will not be afraid. The Lord is the strength of my life. We recite those scriptures, but they make no sense to us. Righteousness, the practice of righteousness, is that you make the word of God become real to you by meditation. Through the instrument of meditation, Jacob, Joseph, found out that it does not matter where he is, the God of Israel is able to prosper you. So for him, prosperity was that whatever I lay my hands on will increase. Because prosperity and flourish mean the same thing. It's the same word. The righteous have a right. The fact that you are called the righteous, you have a certificate in your hand to prosper. Are we together? Are we together? Are we together? What's the most difficult subject you have ever come across? You have the license to understand it. Because you have an advantage. If you can come to realize that because you are the righteous, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, there is an ability for you. You have a certification that whatever you want to learn, you can actually learn it. Doesn't matter if you have tried it before and it didn't work. Are we together? Are we together? If you have found something hard to understand before, eh? understand this thing I'm teaching you and go and learn it again. And you will see how easy it will come. Nothing changed, just that your mind enlarged. Are we together? The righteous have a license to flourish. In fact, the righteous are known by their flourishing. The righteous live by faith. One, but they will also move from living in addition to living by faith. They also flourish. Because it is the righteous who understands that values can be given. And in the giving of values, they understand they have a license to have a return. And when the return begins to come back to them, eh, they know it was not by their ability. It was the license that was given to them to prosper. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. Deuteronomy 8, 8, 10. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Not for any other reason, but so that he can establish his covenant that he swore to your fathers. So God is obligated to prosper you. Not because you did anything, 
because he made the covenant to Abraham that anybody that comes from me I will make sure they prosper I will be with them to prosper them however your prosperity will not come until you know you have a license to prosper so you can pick any subject and say because I am the righteousness of God this was hard before but this is somebody now who understands I have a license to prosper what does it mean to prosper to prosper means to have understanding it means to know the rule of the game it means to repeat success multiple times you keep beating the previous record that's righteousness prosperity is not all about money in fact prosperity is not money first Prosperity is the abundance of understanding. Are we together? When you have understanding, eh, it will be easy to make some things work. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we say after me? I have license to prosper. I have license to be successful I have license to flourish God has given me ability to excel God has given me ability to comprehend God has given me ability to excel above my equals I will show you an example of some people who knew this thing You know in the realm of the spirit your age does not matter your physical age does not matter your understanding is what gives you access so some young men young boys were taken captive at an early age to babylon and (laughs) bible said they were offered meat that was offered to idols and they understood that to keep the purity of their mind and not to engage in what was going on because it looked like food only but behind it there was a spirit influence they were feeding them with a kind of knowledge that would give them a kind of education that would make them forget God and they chose to consecrate themselves because they knew the rights and the privileges they had in God so they decided not to eat the king's meat out together and the Bible said God gave them who did who did God gave them ability to understand wisdom and hard sentences so in a class where the lecturer is lecturing the Babylonians only four guys understand the first time he said it that's what it means Eh? he will explain, he will explain, he will explain they will not get it but four guys explain it once they get it the world will call them genius eh? in the kingdom is the privilege of every child of God the righteous shall flourish they are, but I have a problem with mass it's because you don't know you have license to flourish Pick up your master's book and say, I have license to understand. Eh? And see the difference. I have license to understand and see the difference. Are we together? The righteous shall flourish. The word shall there is not future tense. King James in some portion uses shall. For example, my God shall supply your need. It is not a future tense. The word shall there means without fail. Now he puts the synonym. The righteous without fail will flourish. Without fail. That is it cannot fail. Do you understand? 
when you come to that understanding you will find that it's impossible for you to fail it's impossible in this kingdom we don't fail we learn and we succeed those two things what you think is failure is a learning process you didn't fail you learned how not to do it again you learned how not to do it <laughs> yes change your methods you learned how not to do it we either win or we learn we don't fail do we understand do we understand the righteous will without fear flourish that is if you understand this context you can begin to put it to work and it has promised that it cannot fail but my god shall without fear supply your needs according to his riches in glory by christ jesus so what do you need to know you need to have a revelation of my god and a little glimpse into what his pocket looks like when you see what his pocket looks like eh, you will be confident that you can't go without supply when you have a revelation of what is left after you are picking your needs <laughs> your mind will be enlarged what does God have left if he supplies your need? Eh? You can't measure it. <laughs> he can meet your needs a million times. And he will not, he, it will not look like he took anything from his supply. However, we are limited by our understanding. We don't receive from God, not because God does not release those things. It's because our bosom is small. We don't know the things that are for us. Hence, we find it hard to receive some things from God, even though they are for us. I'll show you an example. Luke chapter 15, the parable of the prodigal son. Eh? There were two prodigal sons in the passage. We thought it was about the one that ran away. No. That passage eh, eh, is not complete if you don't see the prodigal attitude of the firstborn. What was his prodigal attitude? He said, Father, <laughs> this one squandered your money. He came back, you received him. I have been here all the while. You have not given me as small as a little goat to celebrate with my friends. What did his father say? What did his father say? Look for it for me. Look 15. Let's read it and we'll close. Luke 15. <laughs> what did his father say? Verse 32. Verse 31. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is, is yours. Huh? So all the while, he had access to take anything he wanted to. But he felt you did not give me. <laughs> the father said it's already yours. <laughs> you you I don't need to give you because I've already given you. You are the one who is not taking it. So that Jesus did not finish. He did tell us the extension of the story. But what I think that guy would have done the next day was to pick a goat and say, Father, I'm coming. <laughs> what will his father say? Nothing. Nothing. His father will say nothing. Because it is his own. It is his own. There are many privileges available for us that God has provided for us. What do you think that scripture means? Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, who 
have blessed us with how many? All that you need has been given to you. According as his divine power has given unto us how many things? All things for life and godliness. It means your provision all through life has been catered for. Now, if you do not know it has been catered for, you also will not know that you can take it. Hence, it will be there, but you will be in it. The righteous flourish because they understand that there is a provision already for them. The righteous are not orphans. They are those who realize that they have a father who has made a provision. So some people cry out and say, God, why am I having bad dreams? Ah, <laughs> God, please take away these bad dreams. Please take away this stomach pain. What will God do? <laughs> you know why he is quiet? Because he has already given you power. Eh? The power is not with him again. He has conferred it on you. And what is, what is the capacity that that power has? Over snakes and scorpions. And over every, in case you think they are physical snakes and scorpions, he says, and over every other power of the enemy. The enemy has life sniffing ability. He chokes you with situations that will sniff your spiritual life out of you. You have the power over him. Abi? The, the enemy has stinging ability. Eh? He will want to poison your heart with different thoughts. That's what the scorpion does now. Is that not what it does? He stings you. And the poison begins to flow in your body. Isn't it? Until it drains you of the strength you have. Is that not what ungodly thoughts do? They enter like a small dot. And gradually, if you do not say anything about them you keep praying god take this thought away from me what will happen to you they will become larger and larger and god will not be able to do anything why because he has delegated the authority to you so pain can be in your body you say in the name of jesus i know i have authority over you be gone and you don't need to think twice you don't need to check again even if it is still there, you don't need to check because you have the authority. You have released the word. You have lived out your faith. Expect that it will happen. Because the righteous can also know what has been given to them. Eh? And not know how to expect it when they ask for it. So you can ask for healing. You can demand for healing and have no expectation for healing that expectation is your bosom it is very small so when you make a demand in the spirit expect a physical reaction because the realm of the spirit eh, is the printout is a printout realm of what is happening in this eh, of, the, the physical realm is the printout realm of what is happening in the realm of the spirit just like you have a paper, you connect your printer, you press print, and you, you just say, well, I'm not expecting the paper to come out anyway. The, you know there's paper in the machine. You know that what you printed is correct, and you know the printer is plugged, and you press print. However, you walk away and say, I don't even know why it's not coming out. What will happen? The paper will print, but you will not see it, because you left before it came out. When you press print, does it come out immediately? It takes time to print it before coming out, isn't it? When you make a declaration in the realm of the spirit, the natural takes time to bring it out. However, it will come out. Wait for it. Do you understand? So don't say, I, I, I decree it did not come. How did you wait? 
Were you expecting it? The righteous will only flourish because of what they know. Increase your bosom, you will find out there are many returns. Let us pray. Be on your feet. Okay. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving us your Spirit till your walk here on earth is done. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving us your Spirit till your walk here on earth is done. Can we sing it together? Thank you, oh my Father. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving us your Spirit till your walk here on earth is done. I'll give you three minutes. Is there anything you are dissatisfied with? Go ahead and release your righteousness. Go ahead and release your faith against them. Three minutes. Three minutes. Don't take it lightly. Don't take it lightly. Make declarations with your mouth. Say the things that the word of God has said about you. Make those bold proclamations. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. There is no fear in me. There is perfect love in me. For perfect love drives out fear. God has not given me the spirit of fear. But of love, of power and of a sound mind. I have a sound mind. I have the peace of God. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Is guarding my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. For the kingdom of God is not, a, is not all about drinking and eating. But of righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. I have righteousness because I have been made righteous by the sacrifice of Jesus. I have been given righteousness by the sacrifice of Jesus. I have been made new. I have license to prosper. In me is the ability to generate success. In me is the ability to succeed in whatever I lay my hands on. In me is the ability to comprehend every hard sentence. In me is the ability to interpret hard sentences. I am not discouraged because the joy of the Lord is my strength. I am strengthened by the things I say. When I say there is a lifting up, there is indeed a lifting up. When others say there is a casting down, I will say there is a lifting up. When all things go contrary, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers, and under his wings shall I trust. His truth shall be my shield and my buckler. I shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrows that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side, and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh me. Only with my eyes will I behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because I have made the Lord who is my refuge, because I have made the most high my habitation, there shall no evil before me, neither shall there any plague come nigh my dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. They shall bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against a stone. I shall tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall I trample on the feet, because I have made the Lord who is my refuge, the most high my habitation because I have loved him and because I have set him he will set me on high because I have known his name
name. He will deliver me and honor me. When I call upon his name, he will answer. He will deliver me and show me great and mighty things. With long life will he satisfy me and show me salvation. The Lord is the cup of my inheritance. The Lord is the portion of my lot. The Lord is my lot in the land of the living. The Lord is that which I have. The Lord is that which I hold on to. The Lord is he who holds my future. I shall not be afraid. I shall not be afraid. Whatever I sow, I will reap. I have expectation because the Lord is my expectation. Go ahead. Make those declarations. Address those issues. Is there something you found out in your life that should not be there? Ask it to leave now. You have authority to exercise your faith because the scripture says the righteous shall live by faith. The righteous shall guard their pu- the purity of their heart by faith. The righteous will guard the issues of their heart by faith. The righteous will make sure that they keep a pure environment by the release of their faith. The righteous will exercise Size the kingdom of God and bring his will to pass through the release of their faith. Go ahead. Release those words of faith. Faith is communicated by the words that you speak. Faith is released by the words that you say. Faith is released by the words that you say. The mountains will not move until you tell them where to go. The seas will not be swallowed up until you tell them where to go. Go ahead and release your faith with your mouth. Give instructions to those things. They will hear you. They will hear you. Scripture says that strangers shall come out of their hiding places. They shall hide when they hear the words of my mouth. Go ahead and release those words. Go ahead and release the words of faith. Go ahead and release the words of faith. You are not small. You are not inferior. You are inferior to no one. God has made you unique. He has made you fearfully and wonderfully. You have no blemish. You have no flaw. You are perfect in his image. He has created you in his form. He has put his details in you. He can not make a mistake. He did not make a mistake. You are unique in yourself. You are his child. You are his child. The one he paid to have. The one he paid to call to himself. He paid a sacrifice to have you. You are not less than you are. You have not been redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus. I'm no longer slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer slave to fear. I am, I am a child of God. Oh. I'm seeing something in my spirit and I'm going to speak against it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak against every adverse spiritual climate around anyone. You feel lost, you don't know who you are. Somehow you fear that you are sliding into unconsciousness of your personality. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I decree that you are set free from those thoughts in the name of Jesus. 
I command every influence of Satan, every influence of depression, every attack on your joy, every attack on your peace, every attack on your righteousness. I proclaim by the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus. May such voices cease now in the name of Jesus. I bring the judgment of God over every voice that seeks to take your attention of God. And I decree in the name of Jesus from today you will hear them no more. From today they cease to speak to you. From today they are cursed in the name of Jesus. I decree the fire of God turns them off in the name of Jesus. I decree that the peace of God floods your heart right now in the name of Jesus. To every troubled heart, peace in the name of Jesus. To every troubled heart, peace in the name of Jesus. To every troubled mind, peace in the name of Jesus. To everyone who has issues, struggles to remember what you read, struggles to remember what you have learned. I decree from today, your mind is doubled, your remembrance is doubled in the name of Jesus. Your retention is accelerated in the name of Jesus. Whatever you read, you will recall in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus and I decree from now on, I open you up to the ministration of the spirit of wisdom. When you speak the Lord, when you sleep, the Lord will begin to teach you things in the name of Jesus. I decree that the influence of the spirit that brings revelation is released upon you in the name of Jesus. From now on, you will begin to have foresight into things to come. May the Lord begin to grant you insight into things that have not happened. May he begin to show you the hidden secrets of the heart of man. May he begin to teach you hidden things that you need to know in the name of Jesus. May you become a sign and a wonder in your classes. When you read, may you have retentive memory. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord show you what is in the heart of your lecturer. May he reveal to you what the questions are so that he can lead you aright in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Glory be to God in the highest. Say after me, the righteous shall flourish. Because I have the righteousness of God. I have license to flourish. I receive understanding. My mind is open. The eyes of my understanding, they are flooded with light. Wisdom is common to me. Divine wisdom is common to me. When I speak, I speak the wisdom of God. When I release my words, they are full of power. I have ability to comprehend hard subjects, hard things, hard dreams, hard issues. In the name of Jesus, I become a sign and a wonder. I become a solution to people around me. In the name of Jesus, my value is increased for the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. We share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen.